One man, one murloc, one giant angry badger. This is Blue Please. It begins now. Indeed. Yes, this is Blue Please here on WOW Radio with myself, Total Biscuit. Welcome to the show. What am I supposed to talk about this week? Oh yeah, there's been a patch. Yeah, I suppose I'd better talk about that. What's been going on with me this week? Um, absolutely nothing. Got a permanent contract at work, that's always nice. Unfortunately, they decided, oh, we'll make him work Sunday so he can't wear Blackwing there. <laughs> funny. Really funny. The irony is it's a game store as well. A game store is stopping me from raiding Blackwing Lair. Ah, oh well, never mind. I can live with it. We'll raid Tuesday as well. Right, okay. So, we've had a patch. Some of you may have noticed that. And it's been declared as the buggiest patch in Blizzard's history. Yeah. It's also the biggest patch in Blizzard's history. Ugh. I'll talk about that first, shall I? Bugs, 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 and bugs galore. Yeah. We know the patch has bugs. Every single patch they ever release has bugs in it. And there's a reason for that. It's because it's an MMO. You can't have an MMO without bugs. It's not allowed. No, really, I'm not kidding. It's actually in the law now. You must have bugs in your MMO or else it's not really an MMO. It's true. Actually, I could be lying there. But, nah, you'll never notice. So, yeah. It's got a lot of bugs in it. That's fair enough. I can't say I've actually found any yet. I've been playing quite a bit since the patch, and I've seen no bugs at all. I've seen issues, like the whole, ooh, they've uh, increased the price of Remove Curse, and they've increased the price of Dispel Magic, which, I'll tell you for a fact, kicked us in the teeth last MC run we did. Still did it, but it's draining the mana a lot faster than it should be. Oh well. If that's the way Blizzard wants to play the end game into single, that's fine. We shall see what happens. Anyway. There's a thing called Anchorage in this new instance. It's new instance, new patch, what am I talking about? It's a new instance, folks. But it's not like any normal instance. Now, the big raiding instances you need to be attuned for. MC, Blackwing Lair, Linux Years Lair, they all require attunement. However, Anchorage is a little bit different. It's not so much an attunement as a you are not getting in here unless your entire server contributes to a worldwide war effort event in which you have to give a whole lot of bandages to people. They're going to open the doors with a big pile of bandages. Just sheer force, sheer numbers of bandages. I'm going to stack up there. Now, I can understand the whole war effort thing, that's fine. Although it does seem to me a little bit odd that they will only accept certain kinds of food. Uh, well, our soldiers can't live on anything other than delicious wolf steaks. Okay. Fair enough. Well, why didn't, you know, generic food items? Wouldn't that have made a difference? Well, no, apparently not. We do have to actually give them wolf steaks. Various herbs and all that kind of thing. Now, this has several interesting knock-on effects. Well, the first knock-on effect is you are never going to find a peace bloom ever again. Or at least not till the event's over. I pity lower level herbalists, I can tell you that, and lower level alchemists, the amount of peace bloom that must be being farmed right now by the service who are actually taking part in the event. <laughs> Unpleasant. A very horrible thought has to be said. That's one knock on effect. A second knock on effect is that rep grinding has suddenly become a whole lot easier. Now, as you know, or as I hope you know, it is possible to ride another race's epic mount. But to do that, you need to grind your rep up with that particular faction. And how do you do it? You give them lots of rune cloth. Or at least that's the way it was. Now you have a choice. You can do a whole bunch of stuff. You get these honor tokens and you can hand them in to any faction you like. So I can gather up 30 honor tokens, give them to, say, the Undercity guy, and he'll give me honor with the Undercity. That's great, that's cool. So it's not just cloth. Now, that's going to be helpful in some respects, because it's going to have a knock-on effect on the price of rune cloth. It's also going to have a knock-on effect on the amount of rune cloth that is available. I can't count the number of times I've gone to the auction house, found no rune cloth, because some guy with 
more money than sense has just bought the entire auction house worth of Runecloth because he's grinding it for his, you know, cross-faction epic mount. Bit of a pain, has to be said. So you've got a variety of different things there. Hopefully that will stop some of the blatant farming and hopefully that will at least encourage people not to just shove a load of Runecloth up there and then have it all bought by someone that's just got all his gold off eBay or whatever. So yeah. That's a good thing. Now, the war effort itself. This is actually what I'm going to be talking about for quite a lot of this show. Mainly because I can't think of anything else to talk about. It's amazing. You can get a patch and you actually play it. And say, well, there's actually not a lot much to talk about anymore. Because I've talked about it already. But yeah, let's deal with the war effort. Let's deal with Anchorage. Okay. I'm looking at a page right now which is the Anchorage War Supply Server Rankings. Now, I'm looking at the top realm at the moment is a PvE realm, not entirely surprisingly. People are too busy farming and there's not, obviously, no ganking going on, so it's easier to get the materials. Mediva, uh, 34% of the way up there for the whole war supplies thing. Good stuff. Nice one. Well done. However, I scroll down the list of 215 servers... Who do I see as the bottom PvP realm? Oh, it's my realm! Great! EU Masrigo, well done! Has to be said, I'm not entirely surprised by this. And this brings me on to my main point in this particular discussion. Why isn't the war effort scaled to the size of the server? It seemed to me a little bit odd that this, this is how it turned out. I logged on and I had a look at what we required. It's like, what the hell? How are we going to get that, exactly? How are we going to get all this stuff? Divide it by the number of active people that there are on the server. Divide it by the number of people actually interested in doing it. And you've got a recipe for disaster. Because there's not going to be enough people doing it. We cannot open Anchorage at this point. Now, I've heard rumours. I have no official confirmation on this because I can't find it on the forums. If Blizzard has posted it, they need to sort their forums out. Because we cannot, for the life of me, find any Blizzard posts on anything these days. Give us a Blizzard tracker. Just click a button and we can see all of Blizzard's posts. Assuming there isn't one already. But the fact of the matter is... They may be opening Anchorage anyway, but it might take a long time to do so. Now, what does that mean? That has several knock-on effects. First knock-on effect. If they were up to open Anchorage and they said, hey, we're going to open Anchorage, then why bother with the war effort, especially on a low-pop server where you reckon it's not going to be possible to get that many resources anyway? So why bother? No point, really. Okay, that's one knock-on effect. Second possible knock-on effect. Why bother at all if they're going to open it? Can't you wait a few weeks? Doesn't it trivialise the whole war effort thing? Why bother opening the gates? Using, of course, the war effort when they're going to be opened anyway. Good question. Again, seems to trivialise the whole thing. Now, let's see, let's see, let's see. Now, I'm going to confirm, Tigol said this. The war effort, if it's begun on your server, it will eventually resolve on its own. Meaning if players choose not to participate, eventually the needed materials will start ticking up over time, regardless of player interaction. However, someone on the server will still need to complete the quest to, forget, to get the Scepter of the Shifting Sands to actually open the gates. Now, that one is a different quest altogether. That involves killing Broodlord Lashlayer and then getting a whole bunch of carapaces from Silithids, which, let's face it, is doable. I would hope that pretty much every server that's interested in getting into Anchorage does have at least one guild capable of taking down Broodlord Lashlayer, is more than likely. However, the event will resolve itself. When? And if it's going to resolve itself, why did you put it in there in the first place? It does seem a little bit odd. What it seems to be doing, it's favouring high pop servers, let's face it. Because there is no scaling on the event, because it hasn't been scaled, it doesn't matter how big your server is, there might be five people on your server, you'll still be expected to give in three million resources or whatever. There may be 20,000 people on your server, whatever the realm limit might be. 
all up for the event, and they'll crack it through probably in the next few weeks. No problem. Looking at how Mediva's done in the past week. It's been just under a week since the patch. They're already 34% there. The chances are they will drive for it even more now. They will have it open probably within the next week and a half. Whereas other servers have to just sit there. Now, from an individual perspective, that seems a little bit unfair. Now, I'm sitting here thinking, right, well, I do want to get into Anchorage. And I'm quite willing to get on with this event. But all this stuff's going to go to waste. It's pointless me attempting, because I'll never manage it, because there's not enough people on my server. Now, you may argue that, oh, well, you get a rep bonus, and you get nice greens and sacks of goodies. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool and all, but then again, I could just go and buy those myself if I wanted. I could get rep other ways. Now, if you're rep grinding, that's fine, but I'm not rep grinding. That's not my purpose. I don't really want a cross-faction epic mount. I'm not interested. I would like to take part in the event, but if I do... I know I'm wasting my time. Especially if this event is going to resolve itself. Now, there's mixed opinions on the event. Myself, I do like to see the fact that they have put an event in of some description. That's cool. We are lacking world events. We are lacking world cooperation, world interactivity. Whether this was the best way to go about it, I really don't know. It's a start. But what I would say is... Why wasn't it scaled? Why is it not scaled to the amount of active people on a server? It's not that hard to get that information. Let's face it. The census sites can get it. If the WoW census sites can get it, why can't Blizzard? And therefore tie it into the amount of active people on the server in the first place. No scaling is bad, okay? That's my personal opinion on that. Right. Now, what I want to talk about the rest of the show. More stuff about Anchorage and the whole war effort thing. Now, usually I would have a separate topic for work is intended, but this week I'm going to tie it all into the whole Anchorage thing because it is the biggest thing we've ever seen ever in the world, blah, blah, blah. The work is intended this week is going to be as regards to world events. And I want your opinions. I want your opinions on... Did the Anchorage war effort thing work out? Was it what you envisioned as a world event? Is it a good idea? Is it a bad idea? What improvements could be made? I've already suggested that scaling would be a good idea. Is there anything else you can think of? Was it just a trash idea altogether? Should it never have been put in the game? That's the focus of this week's working as intended. I'll play the little sound later. Email the at gmail.com with your answers, folks. Let's hear what you have to say on the Anchorage World Event. The Murloc at gmail.com. Now there is no K in Murloc before people ask. A common typo. You're listening to Blue Please here on Wow Radio. It's time for a silly song. This one goes out to Luku. It's Bill Bailey. It's rather themed to the whole Silithis thing. It's Insect Nation. Enjoy. Enjoy. 